at what point does it get super crazy where you start looking for help and you have no choice but to look for help where where does that meet the middle you know it's like by yourself you have work you're good you're not good you need help hurry up and get help i'm kind of on this side right now so this past two weeks uh, i got a lot of work so it's been building up little by little i have reclaimed two full racks of manuals uh, one and a half of the autos which is a lot of screens and some of them are already you know getting ready to get coated again so on this one is do it's doubled up almost on all of them those are getting ready to get coated and that order back there of 40 boxes is the one that it's keeping me on this side of I need the help so this past week my cousin Chino has been coming to help me reclaim some screens coat the screens he's been burning for me while I'm on the press running the machine and Tina's also been doing a really good job in the office coming in uh, placing orders for banners business cards getting back at customers the ones that she's been getting so my board was filled with like 28 about 28 orders is down to two four six eight ten it's down to 12 which is good right now it's good because we have this order. It's a 2700 piece order. That's a contract printing order. Uh, it's a five color front. We should be able to knock it out in two days on the automatic. And then that one is not due till next Thursday. Then we have another one for Cheater Slick Culture, which we have the screens for right here. They order 120 hats. So some are gonna get black ink, some are gonna get white ink. I need a second screen. Not because I can't change colors, but it's different art. Same design, but he wants the wheel. Okay, right there. He wants the wheel to be black on one of them, and he wants it to be white on the other. So I can't just change the ink on this one. But anyways, you know, uh, he placed an order for close to 800, 900 t-shirts. And it's split between uh, this design right here that's going on three different color shirts. Three color front, three color back. Or speed culture pretty cool design and then we have the Paulson's design it's just gonna be a one color front one color back we have their regular cheater slick culture uh, one color print they all get size tags that's the left chest for their original print and this is from the three color so um, took me like an hour and a half to print out all the film because that one was confusing. It was giving me a really hard time. Why? I don't know. I'm not really the graphic designer to sit there and separate artwork, especially when it has a bunch of layers and clipping masks and stuff that I don't really understand. So that one was driving me nuts. Uh, right now it's six o'clock. I've been here since 630. So I got about another hour before I get out of here. And that one has to be in California by Monday or Tuesday of next week. So um, all the shirts are coming in tomorrow. I'm gonna go pick them up. We have this one that's not gonna start until, I might come in on Saturday and Sunday, knock that one out. I wanna give it to them by Wednesday. The event is not till the weekend. Actually, let me put a little bit more context into that order. That one is for an event that's gonna happen this weekend. And the guy is gonna get all the fronts screen printed like before the event and then at the event he's gonna have like six different backs set up because he has like a mobile screen printing shop and he prints at events so 2700 t-shirts at the event i'm gonna be there i'm gonna help him print and um six different backs like i said people show up they're like i want that back they all have the same front and almost all of them go so it goes really good for him he has this event once a year that's this popular but he does that, he does this on-site printing like every weekend almost, as long as we have like the school period. And that's really good for him. And that's keeping me busy because he goes to schools, does his on-site printing, and then people ask him if he screen prints. So a lot of people tend to be not really good at getting back at schools for their orders or whatever. So when he shows up, he basically picks, picks up the account 
and uh, he outsources the work to me. So that's one of the accounts that I do really care for and I take care of for contract printing. And that's the reason why, because he brings this kind of volume. Not all the time, this is like a once a year thing, but you know, 300, 500 pieces here and there, it's pretty good. And at least he does it once or twice a month. So not too bad. And uh, that's kind of why this thing has been building up to the point where I definitely need help. And I started actually looking for a printer. The printer that I have my eyes on right now, shh, they're busy. So I, I don't have enough work for them to be here full time 40 hours and they need their 40 hours. So in order for me to bring them in here, I would have to give them a better price than they're getting at the other place and have them for 40 hours at the shop. So it's kind of difficult, but um, that's kind of where I'm at. I've been very busy taking care of a lot of orders. I've been picking up more and more accounts. These guys from Quicken Loans, um, there's apparently 72 teams here in Arizona. I, right now we have like 14 or 15 of them. They've been recommending me here um, one after another after another. And you know we haven't even gotten to a quarter of them. And the first ones that we started printing for are already placing reorders for new designs. So a lot of work. And uh, it, it is crazy that I have this much work and I can still handle it by myself in a way. You know, Chino's here every now and then. Uh, my wife does help me catch every now and then. But for the most part, you know, I'm still here, burning screens, printing out film, setting up uh, the job and then coming in and printing it. So to be a thousand percent honest with you guys, if I didn't have the screen printing background that I have and to I guess have the privilege to work at the place that I worked at to learn how to structure, how to manage and how to run the business, uh, I would be pulling my hairs right now. But you know, I'm pretty calm because I do have my standard two week turnaround time. And if somebody comes in and they need something a little bit faster, I can see where I'm at and I know if I can squeeze them in or not. And if I can't, you know, I'm sorry, there's really nothing I can do for you. And that's kind of like how I manage my, my volume. And it's worked out, it works out for me, it works out for them. Sometimes they have events and I'm slammed, so I just tell them I'm sorry. I'd rather say no than to look bad because the word spreads really fast. And just like people recommend you because you did a good job, people talk really bad about you when you do a bad job. So it kind of goes both ways. You gotta learn to pick your battles. It's very hard to say no when you want to get your job and your word out there and just look good and make sure that somebody got the shirts and you save the day and all that great thing and all those great things that come along with like fulfilling orders. But the hardest thing is learning how to say no. And once you, I guess, learn that skill, because that's really a skill that you have to learn how to pick up over time. And until then, you're going to just overwhelm yourself with work. So what I'm trying to say with all of this is that for everybody out there who's starting to screen print and don't really have the background of working at a screen printing shop that structure that has a schedule that you know has order after order coming in and not everybody's running around the shop with their heads cut off like chickens or um, just those type of scenarios when you get to the point where people start you're gonna feel like customers are going to start attacking you but it's not that it's just that you don't know how to structure the business and it is difficult I think there are a couple of websites out there that help you uh, manage I think Printavo is one of them I've never used it I'm not recommending it but I heard that that's for like the screen printing industry so uh, if you run into trouble that's one to look at I, I couldn't tell you what to do if you ask me because I did it for 10 years at a very well-structured company. I learned their system. I know how to manage the orders that come in in, uh, in the, the time frame that I'm given, that I give myself to handle it. So uh, that all comes with experience. And that's why I always say that it's good to work at a screen printing shop for at least six months to a year so that you can get into that um, habitat, you know, be in that little world of screen printing where orders come in constantly and you can see how they manage them so that when you come to your shop you know how to manage your shop in your own way depending on how what kind of machines you have and you know the knowledge that you have to screen print so 
Um, it's a lot. I've been thinking a lot. I've been wanting to shoot a lot of videos like every single day, but uh, work just kind of took over. You know, the orders have to go out. I do want to sit here and talk about what's going on and show you guys the prints and just like I've been doing, but it, this, this time around it really got to me and I've been working some crazy hours. I, I've been, I started, uh, I started thinking about a second company like three weeks ago. Uh, we've been working the details. Tomorrow we're gonna have a meeting about it. I'll let you guys know once that thing is up and running, if it makes it to the world, I guess. Uh, we have the design ready, we have the idea, everything is just looking so legit right now, and it has nothing to do with screen printing. So my supplier was kind of scared when I mentioned that to him because he thought it was gonna put me out of the business, but I told him that this is kind of like something that I'm passionate about, so this thing going anywhere. And it's just a lot of things that go on. You know, as an entrepreneur, I think that you're probably never satisfied with what you have. You know, you get to a point where you start actually making a little bit of money and your ideas can actually come to life. So you start, you start being creative. You can actually do something, change things, hire people, uh, I guess make more money and create more opportunities for everyone else. So that's... That's the good thing about being an entrepreneur that, that's not satisfied and then doesn't plateau once they get to a certain point and has the ambition to move forward and keep growing. So uh, I hope that this is inspiring to somebody out there. I hope that you guys pay attention to what I'm saying because uh, when you guys get to this point, and I hope that all of you guys do, where orders come in like this, where you have a ton of screens coming through, they have to get reclaimed where you have to keep track of the orders, your emails, your messages, your Instagram, your Facebook, uh, your Snapchat, depending on how you market yourself, a lot of that stuff can weigh on you. And if you piss off customers, they're gonna make you look bad. So you have to learn how to manage all of this. And it is a lot of work. And um, you know, the people that do know me and they have been seeing me, how I handle all of this, they keep telling me like, this is what you wanted. So now that you have it, what are you going to do? You know, it's like, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get more work. Uh, I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep marketing. And that's just really what I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. So I'm not scared of this. Uh, seeing a 2700 piece order to me, it's just like, it's really good to have it here at the shop. And I appreciate it 100%. But it doesn't scare me because the place where I come from, we would print 10, 50,000. We had a 120,000 piece order that we did once for Harkins Theater. It was a six color front, nine color back with a discharge, four color process and spot color. So, it, it, you know, I've been through crazy. This is pretty calm still. So I know how to manage it. The problem is that when you start getting work and you don't know how to handle it, you might lose your mind and just kind of give up or ask for help. But it could be too late because by then people start spreading the word and then you start looking bad and you don't, you don't want to get to that point. So you got to learn how to manage that. And there's really no way for me to explain it or put a video together on how to do it besides, you know, letting time kind of teach you the way and by being responsible. So that's all I have to say for today. I know it's kind of eh, but I wanted to get it off my chest because uh, since I started, it's never gotten to this point. And I'm glad that it has because I, I can now talk about it. And I didn't want to put out an example and not show you guys the actual 40 boxes sitting there. And then I'll show you guys over here what's going on. We have the banners that came in. You know, we have uh, orders that we've been knocking out. This is not just one order. It's one, two, three, four with this one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. And they picked up. They picked up like three orders today. So, um, plus the ones that I have on the board and the ones that Tina has on her board. So it's a lot, it, it is a lot, I'm not gonna lie. And I'm glad that it is a lot because we know how to handle it. But I want you guys to take a look at what's going on so that you guys can realize like, wow, I'll be there one day, I know I will. But the problem is, are you ready? Can you handle it? My dad has been telling me, are you ready for what's coming? And I say, yes, I say, yes. But when it's here, it's just like, whoo, well, you got to get to work, you know, getting up at six, leaving sometimes to shop at seven. You don't come in early enough and you don't leave late enough. That's just the way it feels. You know, having a nine to five is cool. You know, being like 
having your own little side work and your own little side hustle, it's cool. But when you actually focus on getting your business running, there is no nine to five. There is no Saturday. There is no Sunday. You know, well, there is, but it just depends how much you want to grow. If you want to get to the point where you plateau and just kind of stay flat, you're cool, kind of creeping through life, being okay with what you have, there's nothing wrong with it. But for those who want to hustle and keep going, the grind just doesn't stop. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Please help me out. Reach to the 4,000. I'm going to do another huge giveaway. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you think it was helpful. Thumbs down if you thought I was talking too much and not teaching you guys something. And uh, please comment if you can relate, if you're getting to this point. If you want to get to this point, just let me know where you're at. I really want to gauge kind of like where you guys are at. I kind of want to know where you guys are at out there. So just comment below, you know, just getting started. Um, I'm, at, I'm where you're at. I'm past the point where you're at and I'm doing really good. You know, we figured how to uh, systemize our company and it's working well using this, this website or just kind of, just throw it out there. Let me know where you're at, where you stand, and uh, yeah, so peace.